let's create a new file. And uh, like I said, I mostly start out with uh, percussion, just to get a feel for uh, the rhythm that I'm composing to. So I go into the noise channel, create uh, a simple drum loop of four bars, create a new instrument. Uh, and I mostly start out with uh, some nice hi-hat rattles. So let's see. That's way too fast. If you want to, uh, if you want to edit the B, uh, BPM, I forget, I forget uh, to mention this. What you can do is you can go to the song screen, press select up, and that'll bring you to uh, the settings menu. So you can uh, save your files or load different song data, uh, and you can also change the BPM. So what I like to do is I like to make a bit more like slow, groovy uh, tracks. So let's create. Uh, this all currently the, the the rhythm or groove that I have is r very robotic. Like it almost sounds like an intro to some Gabber song or something. So what I want to do is I want to create a bit, little bit of swing. You know, have some uh, hats delayed. So what I can do is I could go select down, and it will bring me to the groove screen. And um, I really have a hard time explaining this, but basically. Um, the two sixes represent the um, amount of ticks which, can, which you can s s view as time spent on that row. So if I increase the first row to seven and the second row to five, what it will do basically is it'll play the first row longer than it'll play the second row. And this will create a sort of swing. So if I compare it to what it was, you can already tell it's a lot more like groovy. So let's start uh, adding some snare drums. I don't, I'm not sure where to stand, <laughs> not to block the screen too much. And maybe have like a... The noise channel isn't really suited to create kick drums, but we're going to try and reach down into the, uh, the very uh, small or lower frequencies by changing the shape a bit. Oh, that's good. If I shorten this. So it's not the best kick drum that you'll hear, but it's, it's a start. And uh, the, the, uh, the drums already sound a bit stale. So let's say we liven it up a little bit. So let's, for example, make this one, this hi-hat here, fade in. and make this one a bit longer just to, you know how a hi-hat opens and closes, so we can lengthen and shorten the envelope to create like an open and a closed hi-hat. Oh, that's actually the snare drum. <laughs> okay, so that'll work for now. So now we have a bit more of an idea of what we actually want to compose. So let's uh, start writing some background melodies. I usually put my background melodies in the Pulse Channel 2 because Pulse Channel 1 has some extra sweep features. So if you want uh, that extra bit of capabilities to do some more uh, complicated programming, it's good to do like the simpler stuff in Pulse Channel 2. So let's see. <laughs> Uh, 
So that works for now. I like those, writing those like funky little pieces of music. Okay, so already this sounds like complete shit because we have way too long notes. So let's go into uh, our instrument and start editing it for a bit. Uh, what I can actually show you is there is, this is a bit more advanced, but I can help you with this uh, when the live stream shuts off. Uh, uh, what we can do is we have tables. And tables are a thing that I avoided for the first two years that I made music on Game Boy. And looking back on it, I wish I just faced my fears and picked it up as soon as I started, because this is a very, very powerful tool to make even like very simple pulse instruments sound incredibly lively. So what you have is, instead of one, you have two command rows, which uh, can be extremely useful because if I input like a vibrato on the very first row and play it, I already have like, having those notes bent back and forth a little bit can make them feel a lot more lively. What's uh, another trick that I fall on a lot is what I do is I have the first row of the wave. Well, actually, I should probably explain what's going on here. So if I press play, you'll notice that the cursor really cycles really quickly through, uh, through the table. Uh, so it plays all these rows in rapid succession, but all the rows just consist of uh, transposing, effects, volume control. So you don't really, uh, you can input notes here, but it's mostly used for stacking effects to create a more lively instrument. So what I do here is I start the wave channel at, uh, I think this is called a 25 duty cycle, and then immediately switch it to a 12 and a half duty cycle. And what that creates, a bit more of a snappy instrument. And if you want to uh, make sure that it doesn't uh, play or loop this section, what you can do is put in an A command, because A refers to another table, and just put in FF, because this is, ta this is a table that will never exist. So if I play now, the cursor won't loop the entire section, and it'll just cut off here. So that'll, that doesn't uh, make the instruments loop in a very awkward way. Um, let's see, uh, so now we've, uh, we've set a couple of, hello, do you, let's see, I think I have, oh, I have, I think I have a Game Boy still over here, uh, no I don't, okay, uh, this might not be the most convenient, uh, Game Boy to use, okay, cool. Uh, I'm rushing through a bit more of an advanced uh, part of the, the seminar, but uh, afterwards I'll give you guys like an hour or two hours to just work the music for yourself and uh, I'll help you out for a bit. Um, so with uh, that table created, we have the entire commands row still available for effects. So what we can do again is we can create like uh, a couple of longer notes here. Oh. doesn't really stand out too much, but... This, see, I, w I was planning on making this note shorter, and then I noticed that it's, it sounds a lot better when it's longer. And you'll find in music that there are a lot of happy accidents. You're like, you'll be, ed uh, you'll be uh, editing a loop, and you're actually like, oh, this sounds much better than what I thought. And I would say, go with it. Like, just... Let the, let the music guide you wherever it takes you. Let's see, let's make this really short. Okay, so this will do for now. Let's not spend too much time on that. Actually, um, if you listen to a lot of like dub or ska or like low tempo chill, chill music, um, they mostly have like uh, uh, one chord, one chord, like dun, 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 dun. So what we can do is we can create something called arpeggios. 
Uh, arpeggios are another interesting thing of working around the limitations of the Game Boy because a Game Boy only has three uh, melodic notes that you can play at any given time. So think of having a keyboard in front of you and only having three fingers uh, that can st only strike one note at a time. Good luck with that. So uh, some really clever people discovered uh, that uh, inst uh, how about instead of having three notes play at the same time, we uh, sequence three notes and cycle through them really quickly because that creates the illusion of striking a chord. So let's figure out where we can place those. Let's see, I think this would be a good spot. And what we can do is put down a C command. And a C command is also noted on your cheat sheet. Uh, I don't think you've, you've received a cheat sheet yet. If uh, someone has one, <laughs> cheat sheets a bunch. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the, the C command uh, is basically an arpe arpeggiator. <laughs> Damn cheat sheets. Uh, <laughs> um, it's basically an arpeggiator. So what I'm doing now is I'm giving it a C command. And these two numbers represent the amount of semitones uh, that uh, are sequenced after it. So if I play it now, you'll notice that we have a chord all of a sudden. Oh, I, I did put it in the wrong spot though. That's a bit of a shame. Well, wow, that took long enough. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm messing up a bit, and uh, I immediately... Uh, it's There's no undo function on the Game Boy, so if you're gonna do an action, you better be committed, because you're not getting that the, the previous state of your save file back. So let's stick with this messy melody for now. What we can do, uh, now that we have like a melodic reference, we can start writing a bass line. So it doesn't have to be too complicated, but first, um, one thing that the noise uh, or the wave channel is really good for is creating synthetic drums. So I already demonstrated how you can create drums using samples, uh, but you can also use a table to create your own uh, kick drum. So. Um, this is another uh, good instance where I learned a little bit about uh, sound design without really realizing it. W uh, basically, if you want to uh, create a kick drum using synthesis, what you do is you create a high note, a high bass note, um, say octave five or six, and you pitch it down really f quickly, and what you get, oh, if you don't have the table screw you over, So if I sequence a couple of notes here, and all of a sudden, we have a kick drum. Uh, let's actually sequence it in a, in a way that complements the rhythm. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Uh, so now we have all this space to put in our bass line. So let's create a new instrument, uh, create a new synthesizer, uh, have it... I'm just doing this out of my head to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, have it fade in a little bit over here.
So now we have a bass line, uh, we have our percussion section. Uh, I don't think we... Let's, let's make the bass line a little bit more clean. That's already better. Let's try a different waveform. So the triangle is really good for having like really deep uh, uh, frequencies. Actually, I like the sawtooth a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, okay, let's stick with this for now. Uh, now, the most fun part of the entire composition, riding solos! I know Bacter will uh, like this as much. Uh, let's see, so we create another, um, another chain, another phrase. So let's find the good starting place for our solo. Uh, have this pitch down, creating sort of a legato. Oh, that makes no sense. Let's see. Okay, I really don't like the last sequence of that, so let's get rid of that. Yeah, you could do a lot more with uh, editing some, throwing some panning in there, adding some envelopes, but you get the idea. So, uh, that's the frame of mind that I try to create music from. Like, I start with percussion, maybe work towards a bass, or maybe I have a background melody in my head. And from there, I just see wherever, uh, wherever it leads, I'll be going.